Welcome to the Ultimate Tolkien Tournament. This is Middle Earth Madness. Welcome back to the Ultimate Tolkien Tournament. Yes. It is not. Yes. It Hello. Is time. It is time for the Sour 16, or whatever we're calling this. <laughs> it, it, the, the Stout 16, the, the Strong 16. The Silmaril 16. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. Go, go trademark it. it that's okay. it. That's the one. Welcome to the Silmaril 16, everybody. Mm -hmm. And welcome back to the Chamber of Death. And by death, I mean the Chamber of Technical Difficulties. <laughs> Which, yeah, bane <laughs> of my existence, man. Anyway, we are running a little okay. bit behind, guys. It it's um, Monday for the computers, too. Dude, it's it's a definitely mon Monday for my computer. It's, it's tax day. I blame tax day. That's dude, what it that's is. that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tax day, Monday, hungover computer going on over here. <laughs> but that's all good. We we have some kick-ass fights tonight, so hopefully that will compensate for the headaches here. The first of which is Aonwe against the Witch King of Angmar. How you like them apples? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This will be a fun one. Come on, Witch King, please. Yes, and I say, without further ado, let's just kind of get into the stats here. We will update the brackets between fights in a bit to show you guys a little more of a recap of uh, of how you got of how we got here. But wasting no time since we've done a little bit of that already, let's just have a look at the stats here and see how we're handicapping this fight. All right, so. Green line, Aenve. Blue line, the Witch King. What stands out here? A little bit of an advantage in accuracy for the Witch King. But he is going to favor his Morgul mace in melee. So his accuracy shall not fail him. Hmm. Ooh. It's, it's interesting because, like, even... The, I mean, the Witch King has a good amount of magic, but even then, that's... Mm -hmm. Nothing for Anway. Yeah, yeah, you're talking one of the stoutest of the Maiar here. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a slog. Although I'm looking here, elusiveness and ferocity favor the Witch King. And again, yeah. what is that? He'll yeah. have to rely on those with the armor deficit once again. You know, it's a uh, can he dance enough? Oh man. Yeah, raging armor deficit here. <laughs> what mm -hmm. are the numbers? 80 to 46 in armor here, guys. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yep, so if a blow is... It, so, yeah. The, the, so, Witch King's striking... Sorry, Anway's striking is a 94 against 46 armor. You kind of sure. cross-multiply here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, that's going to be a big advantage, man. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, deflection and agility are, are also going to be advantages for Anwe. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess really it's one of those. If, if the Witch King can, you know, do do right things and, you know, kind of disappear or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be more wraithy than usual. Um, quite favorable odds here to Anwe, say the robots, um, handicapping this one. But... You know, the Witch King has been a gnarly out for everyone in this tournament. Um, hmm. So not only is there a chance, I, look, none of us are probably picking this upset. Actually, I, I am. I was going to say I shouldn't speak for you guys. Who's picking the yeah. upset? <laughs> I've got it. Yeah, let's. But no, I don't feel super confident with that. Uh, with the armor. Yeah, it's going to take some lucky rolls at the end of the day. It always does in 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 these sort of. And see, the, you know, it's not just that it's a one five because you know now that now that we're in the Silmaril sixteen, <laughs> I 
not like that. Um, yeah. The matchups are pretty close. They, they should be pretty close. Look, this is just a bad matchup for the Witch King. I, he just doesn't yeah. have many advantages. But he's had some bad matchups leading up to this, kind of. So, yeah. sort of similar foes. Yeah, more on that in a minute. We'll show you how they both got here. But I say, let us fight. All right, let's go. Let's All right. Out. Aeon Wave versus the Witch King, the first fight of the Silmaril 16. Are we ready? Let us fight. First attack to Aeon Let's go, with Witch the King. Enchanted Blades. Fails to hit. The Witch King comes back a hit with no damage with his Morgul Mace. A hit and a blow, but barely any damage for Aeon Wave. Tink. The Herald of the Valar. Here comes the Wraith. No damage. Aeonway, no damage. Back and forth they go through six rounds. Failure to engage both ways. Failure to engage again. A blow for the Vala, but mm -hmm. not, the, not the Vala, the Maya. <laughs> Only minimal damage. <laughs> A raging blow for yes! the witch being slightly oh. smitten here. Raging Wraith blow. And through ten rounds. Aeonway has been put on upset alert. With necromancy again. Yes, Man, the rage logo. damage. <laughs> the, the logo helps, right? Yeah. Good range attack here. He should probably stick with that. Let's see if he does. A blow by the Maya to even the fight. Oh, no. Only a 10 point advantage now for the Witch Key. An attack failure to engage. Enchanted Blades failure to engage. They're dancing. A blow for the Maya! Again, minimal damage. The, for, for that lack of armor, his the Witch King's other skills, Madden stats, so to speak, are definitely compensating him, you know, for the, for the lack of armor so far. Yeah. Can it last? Failure to engage. Another blow for Aeonway, and now he has the lead. Ho, ho, ho. So, through 17 rounds, advantage to Aeonway. The Witch King attacks. Can't engage. The wily, wily Maya. Another blow for Aeonway. Minimal. Back and forth. Another blow! With the Divine Aura. Takes him down to the brink of... Well, maybe not death, because he's already oh, dead. No. The brink of life, perhaps? Oh, no. Yeah, the Witch King's on the ropes. Does he have one more massive blow in him? Let us see. Not that time. The counterattack. That should do it. Slay! Oh. Aeon Way wins. Boring. <laughs> Boo, Monway. Boo, Monway <laughs> and his herald. <laughs> so there we have it. First fight of the night. Chalk. You know, not a bad... Not a bad effort by the Witch King, but not a great effort. I was I was hoping for at least get him below half life. There. Yeah, he started. It was exciting for a second there, but yeah. All right. Yeah, so, <laughs> how's everyone doing? We forgot to uh, ask the important questions before the uh, before the fight because of all of our uh, technical difficulties. Yeah, all good. Um, What's new? Doing well, doing well. Um, how about how about y'all? I've been just doing, yeah, a lot of stuff over the weekend. Once again, kind of a short weekend, but that's how that's how she goes. How are you yeah. doing? Good, man. Yeah, like you said, it always it always goes, it always goes uh, a little faster than we want. But uh, I watched yeah, that's true. Bakshi's Lord of the Rings with with my daughter. The animated version uh i think i had started it during our last uh broadcast here but uh man there there are still some things that i really like about that version compared to the jackson films um there's also a whole lot that i don't like <laughs> compared compared yeah. to those other films 
Sure. But yeah, little things like even at the very end, um, and this is kind of the end of the Two Towers book, uh, I, I like the, the writing forth from from Helm's Deep, the, the way they do that scene. I think it's a little closer to the books in, in terms of how Theoden rides out and, you know, they're winning for a second and then they get surrounded, right? And then they're like, oh, dude, well, we knew this was a suicide charge. Let's... Let's get ready to die here, and then Gandalf and and uh, Eomer come, which mm-hmm. is kind of which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that part so much as more of the like the Hobbiton stuff and a lot of the I suppose the first. I don't really understand. I don't remember where it breaks down as far as like the first and second movie, but whatever. Yeah. You know what? Uh, so just real quick, while we're talking about like um other lord of the rings material so i've recently picked back up the um the total war um mod for lord of the rings it's called like divide and conquer well the the original one was called third age not to be confused with the third age the mm, that yep. old like ps2 game or whatever which oh, was also yeah. a lot of fun we, that was that was yeah but um no dude and like it kills me that you that you have not played this. You need to play this because it's basically like do you remember the um do you remember on Battle for Middle Earth how they had the War of the Ring version where it kind of zooms out somewhat civ civ like oh, in a way? Definitely, yeah. So this is like that. It's it's a lot like Civ, um, but it also has the um so there's a, a lot of like you have the full map, right? And yes, I love um, that. Here, actually, I have a couple images. Let me just, since I'm talking about this. It's Let a mod see. for a game that, so I'm shouting it out. There's no reason I can't show this. But, um, so, like, the, it's like, like I said, the Battle for Middle Earth version, except, um, of Total War, except there's so many more factions. I don't know how, how oh, many of this wow. is, like 24 or something like that. Oh, sweet. You can be Arnor, um, you can be, you know, the Southrons, you can be Mordor, you can be Khan, you can be uh, even um, uh, Dorwinian over here, and then you can be the Men of Dale. Um, I'm using my cursor. You can't see where I'm pointing around, but I'm sure you you know, yeah, enough. Yeah. You know enough to kind of follow me. You can be Delamoroth versus Gondor. Which is really cool, and then the one the black banner at the very bottom is the um, is uh, uh, Numenor essentially. But when they land, really, um, yeah. So it's um, multi age. It is, not, yeah, not just third age. Yes. Oh, um, exactly. And, anyways, it's super super strategic. It's very it's difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I remember you saying it was tough and yeah. very very civ like in terms of. Uh, but then, like, it's less focused on resources and stuff like that. Like, you got to keep your people happy and do taxes and things like that. Speaking of tax day. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, but, like, <laughs> it's the, only, the, details. the only resource is, like, making, like, gold, essentially. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about, like, lumber and food and all that because that gets kind of... It's it's definitely a, a strategy war game. Your armies are huge. Um but that's the other aspect to it. Like once you actually get into fights, it zooms in like the old, uh, like Battle for Middle Earth as well. Like Freaking it zooms in, and that. you have. Um, but it's it's very very strategic, and you can like some battles are giant. You can you know I don't know if you've ever played any of the Total War games. Um, no, Haunty, have you played any Total War? I think we um, used to play way back in the day at like Element Gaming or whatever. I, I I'm familiar with it, but it's been such a long time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's enough on that. But I'm telling you, get it because the thing is, is you can get um, you just have to get uh, what is it called? Total War Medieval Two, the original version on Steam. It's like eight dollars or something like that. Mm-hmm. And even that's a lot of fun, just because it's like a re- it's regular historical map. You can be it's yeah. Like, medieval ages you can be france or england or vikings or whoever you know and th- those are fun too but then you just uh there's like an easy like guide to download the mod um online which i can send you or whatever but anyways it costs you like eight bucks and if you have steam what you do like it's it's easy 
Um, I'm telling you, you like Lord of the Rings, you like Civ, all that. It's very worth it. But I'll shut up now. No, you're good. That that's that's a hard that's a hard sell, and I am sold. The one so the one question that begs though is, what part of it is the mod? Because I thought this was a Lord of the Rings game already. No. Uh, no. So this entire this entire thing is a modification that someone made, kind of like the old Civ Civilization Two. Really? Yeah, yeah. They did a really excellent job, Dude. but um, it's. The original game is is Total War and it's Medieval Two. It's just a bunch of uh, different factions that are based on like actual history. Um, they sat there and made orcs and trolls and all like the evil is is pretty impressive just in terms of all the uh, you know with men it's a little easier. You can see how they just like change shields into like Gondorian shields and stuff like that. But even then. Like the amount of different units that they have is really impressive. Like for each faction, um, yeah, and and the, the you know they they took a lot of inspiration from like Battle for Middle Earth, but it's also a little bit more expansive than that. Like I said, with the with all the factions, you can be like Breeland, and like they have like basically no military, but they're um they have the best uh like economy. Oh, huh? that that's so cool. I love the the little the art too, the sigils. Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. I had my wife put all of the names in a hat because I cannot decide with this. Like, I'm like, okay, who am I gonna be? <laughs> that was gonna be my question. Is who who did you end up picking? Uh, right now I'm playing as Mordor. I've played a few different campaigns in the past, um, but right now I'm playing as Mordor, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Just going at it with Gondor, and like, it's so cool because all the Athelian. There's a lot of different like forts down there, and um. Even Osgiliath is split into Eastern and Western Osgiliath, so you have to, like, you know, I'm sitting there trying to take Eastern right now. It's fun. Get it. Nice. Super cool. It. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, what's our next fight? Perhaps the fight of the night. Ooh. Oromir against Legolas. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I was like almost tempted to... To say, let's save this one for last. Oromir. Yeah. Oromir. Yeah, this one is... This one's... Dude. Heavily hewn third round. Heavily hewn third round. So a little bit about how they got here since we didn't do it earlier. Boromir slew two elves. Can he make it three? He slew Eärendil, the six seed. He slew Fingolfin, the three seed. So this should be child's play to him. He has a 10 seed wood elf, not a first age Noldorian mm. elf. Right? So I don't know. Child's play or did I just jinx him? No, because Legolas has been pulling a bunch of upsets and he's just, he's good with that freaking bow, man. What can you do? I feel like, okay, he pulled the upset against Beren and then he got a huge favor by this Uglu Gandalf upset. True. Right? Enough. So I'm I'm kind of like, dude, Boromir needs to get it. He needs to get some for the men of the tournament. There's a there's plenty of elves as we established. So this is creating for our viewers. <laughs> this is creating a bit of a, a bit of bias in the chamber of death here because we got a lot of elves out there and they're kicking ass and Damn. not that many men. So we've got, in fact, is Boromir our last man? Is Turin is dead? Well, I think the, the, Turin's been slain. Turin Turumbar, yeah, he died. He he was defeated by Turin um, and Turin. I, this might be our last man. We've got Saruman against Dungoliant. We've got Luthien against Belek. Fingon, Glaurung, Feanor, Thrandu. This is our last man in the tournament. Well, we still have on we still have on Kalagan the Black. After this, yeah, it's gonna be all Maiar and Beasties and Elves. All right, well. So I mean, the, the oh, one elf. thing is, <laughs> go ahead, Hanti. Sorry. Oh no, no, all good. No, so, I guess so the one thing I would say is that Legolas is such a different profile uh, yeah. versus you know Erendil and Fingolfin, right? Because you had like a magic user, and then uh, you know somebody who's com like you know melee, like hand to hand combat. Now, now he's facing an archer, so he's he's facing pretty much every style of elf you possibly could. Yeah, very well said and very true. Um, 
down yeah. with all of the elves. <laughs> Wait, but so we we just went over. Uh, there's only one more man left, but all the dwarves are slain, aren't they? Yes. Eradicated. Azahal was the last one, and he's been slain. Bullshit. <laughs> you gotta pull for those beasties, man. Um, there's yeah, a couple I, dragons I am, left. I, am, I know, there's I know. A couple Maiar, a couple dragons. So. Boy, but yeah, this is this would be a big one. Now let's see what the advantages are here in the actual stats. Blue line is Boromir. Bro, Green how is line is Legolas. accuracy almost as it's I mean again, it's that horn, but wow. Indeed. Yeah. That's that's crazy. That is wild. And as you pointed out, it, I'll, I'll let you say it, but the observation that you made uh in our chat the other day about that horn of Gondor and Moria. Yeah, so I was actually, um, yeah, <laughs> not to get too into it, but I, uh, for medical reasons, I was prescribed, you know, like basic steroids, like a week's worth. Yeah. And they've been keeping me up late at night, man. Like, I just cannot go to sleep. So I was listening to the audiobook at like 2 a.m. or whatever it was, 1 a.m., and it was like doing dishes or something. And, um, yeah, anyhow, I was listening to that, and I never... You know how you pick up something, no matter how many times you read it or listen to it, you pick up something new every time. Oh, definitely. And yeah. I suppose I either forgot this or never picked it up, but um, the Balrog appears, right? And finally, like, out of its, like, black cloud, very similar. Like, they depicted that in the movie very, very well. But what didn't happen in the movie that happens in the book is right after that, uh Boromir blows his horn on the other side of uh Kaza Doom before Gandalf yes. says any before Gandalf says, you know, um you shall not pass and kind of runs out forward. And when Boromir does that, and I can't remember the exact quote here, so forgive me, but um it describes it like all the all the goblins or all the orcs were like, what the hell? Yeah, that's scary. But then it even said that the Balrog like hesitated for a second and was yeah. slightly spooked, a little bit like, uh, eh, what is this? Um, so yeah, thought that that was super interesting. It not being an elvish weapon or anything. Yeah, it, I think it's I think it's freaking spot on, and it helps explain the how Boromir got here. He slew Fingolfin partly yeah. using the Horn of Gondor. Yeah. If, if you recall, he pulled that 11-3 upset in the second round by being forced by Fingolfin to use his ranged weapon, which for Boromir yeah. is, is the Horn of Gondor. It it doesn't do any direct damage, really, but it it basically gives you a make-it-take-it shot to, you know, to regain the initiative and re-engage. And then yeah. he re-engages and, and gets a heavily hewn blow. And that that basically did it for that fight, which is really cool to see. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, that Horn of Gondor, it doesn't again, if you if you look at it right here in the stat table, his um his piercing stat is 40. Okay. So can you guys see that hand cursor? Yeah. Yeah, so so 40, that's the horn of gondor. It doesn't do much. Of course, it's, it's accuracy. If he blows it, it will hit because it's 95% accurate. Okay, but the damage it's really capable of doing isn't isn't too extreme here right so you're looking at a 40 there however again you know it, that ranged weapon we've seen it time and again in this in this tournament it it matters and it matters a lot so when when we are looking at advantages here blue line Boromir, green line legolas what are we seeing what what jumps out to you piercing Man, interesting because like it's like a zigzag all over the place right like yeah you know legless is higher elusiveness right he's i mean of course gonna have better piercing but just yeah yeah just such different styles yep legless is gonna favor that ranged combat with his galadrim bow which has been freaking lethal along with beleg and along with who am I forgetting? There's th Thranduil, the 12 that's still alive. 12 seed that's still alive in this tournament. All three have been just devastating with their accuracy and piercing. The bow, the elvish bows. They've they've showed up in a big way. It's it's like those three-point shooting teams in March Madness that just get after it from three. <laughs> 
And uh, that's kind of what's been happening, right? So if his luck holds, that's going to be that's going to be no fun for Boromir. But Boromir does have his shield, which is reflected in his both his armor stats and his uh, deflection stats here. So Boromir, we're looking at ferocity. He's, I mean, that stands out like dog balls. His his for <laughs> his ferocity is just off the charts. He, he's and Legolas isn't that ferocious, you know. Okay, what does what does ferocity do? Ferocity helps you strike. Okay, it determines your dice roll, quote unquote, for striking, but also one third of your damage at the very end of the flow if you get there, right? So ferocity is an important one. Huge advantage for Boromir there. Armor, striking. Sorry, the cursor there. Yeah, armor, striking. Um, some, some legitimate advantages, man. And then, you know, going the other way. Spirit for Legolas, magic. Yeah, there's a lot of um, variance among these man. two. Probably more than we've seen in any matchup so far, I think. The yeah. the ups and like yeah th this is wild I mean it's a literal coin toss I'm gonna go with Legolas even though I want to go with Boromir but yes yeah, I just don't like it um his range is that good you know so it is and he doesn't suck with those elvish daggers either he right. he's more balanced than Boromir so mm -hmm. you know. I say, let us find out. Let's Let go. Let's do this. Fellowship. Legolas against Boromir. The ten against the eleven. Perhaps the fight of the night. Perhaps not. We shall see. Let us fight. Fellowship on fellowship violence. <laughs> yes. Fellowship on fellowship violence. The first shot to Legolas with his bow, and he gets a hit. Minor damage. Boromir, can he and come back? Bounced off the shield, maybe, but then got him. Yep. Can't even engage the wily elf. Another That's shot. Hit, but no damage. Sunk in his shield. Ah, can't engage, Boromir. You're going to have to be a, a little bit more agile than that. Ah, the elf. What What happened? Oh, missed. Okay, Boromir comes back. Can't engage. Missed. Douglas, finally oh. missing a little bit. Misses are rare, but man, Boromir, I'm starting to see a fail-to-engage pattern here that could be the death of him, perhaps. Wear Again. him down, wear him down. They're dancing. Another hit by Legolas. Oh. A bigger one. Oh. Yeah. A second arrow. But as we know about Boromir, he can take five or six arrows before he goes down. <laughs> Seven or eight. Yes. Unless they're the size of tree trunks, in which case three. <laughs> Those were incredibly Miss. large arrows. <laughs> Those were huge arrows from Lurts. Oh, man. Oh, another one. Tink. Oh. Luckily, now can Boromir hew the elf? Missed. Missed. Hit! No damage. Speaking of alerts, throw your shield at him or something, bro. Like, get yes. in there. Use that horn. Another hit, but failure to penetrate the shield. Back and forth they go. Another hit. Tink! Boy. He, he's good at least holding his shield up here. He, he's hanging in. But Sorry, he's got to get a hit. He's got to find a way to get a hit. Back and forth they go. They're dancing. Another wound. Tink! My Boy. goodness. The armor in the shield is the only reason the man of Gondor is alive in this fight through 30 rounds. Comes back and he cannot hit. Another arrow. Barely any Christmas. damage. Huh. He's chipping away. Boromir missed. Legolas missed. Boromir cannot engage with his sword. I th that's what? Half of 34? That's 17 times he's failed to engage. Wow. Blow your horn. Tink! 
Back and forth they go. Another arrow. My Barely goodness. Hits. All right, arrows. I'm going to say it right now. Boromir wins. Yes. Let us see. All he's going to You can feel it building. All he's going to need is one fell Legolas stroke. Legolas had too many chances. He, he hadn't shot him in the eyeball, and now he's doomed. I feel it. Perhaps you are correct. Whiff! Another hit! I feel like the, the way that this is I'm playing out is just Boromir is just it's fine. amazing at just blocking those arrows. Or just, yeah, you know, it doesn't just matter. Get, but but just can't, you know, right? But at the same time, that shield is cumbersome. It doesn't let him get, you know, close Indeed. Enough. Throw the and shield if you, at him, bro. And if you cannot engage, you cannot hit. And if you cannot hit, you cannot win. Whiff! Never say ah, never. Another hit. No damage. Here we go, Boromir! Teak! Oh. Oh. Another hit. No damage. There now can Boromir swing? Yes. No, he cannot even engage. He just needs a homer. Just one homer. Another arrow. It's Another fine. four damage. It'll be okay. It's like eight or nine <laughs> arrows at this point. Through 45 rounds, we have an epic 10-11 battle. But Boromir just has to do some damage. It's one hit is all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dancing a little bit. Another hit, another wound, a big oh. one this time. Oh no! And I need you to use and that through... horn right now. Yes. Pull out your the big old horn. Through fifty rounds, big advantage to Legolas. Hey! A wound finally. Oh, oh no! Really hit him. Chance. Yep, that might have been it. Another hit and another barely damage wound. Well, from Legolas, Legolas is bleeding. Yes, at I least haven't... he's bleeding. Can't even engage. Ah, miss by the Galadrim bow of the elf. Another miss by Boromir. Another miss by Legolas. And they're dancing. Another hit, is it enough? Slight Whoa. slight. All right. Boromir is on Here the comes brink the of comeback. death. Here comes the comeback. Here comes rally cap on. Yeah. It's like as soon as he tried using the horn too. Gosh. Oh, did, he did use his horn there. But it, ah, but Legolas had his earmuffs in, his pointy, pointy <laughs> earmuffs. Oh, a miss. And an, ooh, hit, but no damage. Can Boromir get anything going against that Legolas? That shield has like 16 arrows sticking out of it. Yes. And his chest has another three or four, I think. Yeah. Another shot. Missed. Boromir swings. Oh, misses. It's so sad. Another shot. A hit. No damage. Oh, Come on. Boromir is holding on so by a thread. Good. That's what he a does. A hit. A blow. Yeah. Oh. Let's go. Come on. That's what he does. A gash has been struck. He is on the brink. He cannot take any more arrows. Missed. Boromir comes back. Missed. Back and forth. Almost back and forth they go. No. A hit, a wound! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's still alive. Two life. He's still alive. Yes. We know this from the books and the movies, guys. He can take 16 or 17 arrows. You know, a few in his shield, a few in his chest, a few in his legs. Practicing <laughs> taking arrows. He can just keep on swinging. Come on. But he's got to at least engage. Decapitate not gonna happen. this elf. No. Decapitate him. Missed. Does not engage. Another shot by Legolas. Hit. No damage. Back and forth. Oh, no. Can't even engage. Boromir cannot engage. Going on 80 rounds. Through almost 80 A rounds. Fellowship fight indeed. Indeed. Another oh. hit. Oh. No damage in the shield. <laughs> so scary. Crazy. Come on, Boromir. A hit! Ooh. A blow! A yeah, come on! Blow. Let's go! Keep, keep going! <laughs> Nearly evens the fight. He's not dead yet. Advantage Legolas, but it's getting closer through almost 80 rounds. Come on. Another arrow, and that'll do it! Slay! Oh, no. no. Oh. Dang, that was a good fight. Legolas oh. wins. Well, that wow. one did not disappoint. I feel like we have to count the amount of arrows that actually... Uh... 
No kidding. Let's see. So 80 rounds. Let me see here. They were almost never forced to use their backup weapons. Legolas does here with his knives. Cannot. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Um, and Boromir, did he only use the mountain in Aragorn? Boromir. Oh, man. Yeah, so he only blew his horn once. It, and it didn't do much. Yeah. But I mean, just guesstimating, you're looking at, what is that, 39, 38 or 39 arrows? <laughs> Which is, I guess, true to the book, right? Because I mean, that's how, I, just, I didn't want to say it until, you know, the fight was done. I but know. It's ultimately how he's slain in, in the books. Indeed. Would we so, like to consider this random question, although it's slightly off the slightly off the rails because Mountain isn't Lord of the Rings character, but <laughs> what what would you say? I'm assuming he means the Mountain from Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, oh, see, I, I feel like this this matchup it would be very similar to the uh, what's the guy? He he he's. He, it's it's by Pedro Pascal, yeah. There on Game of Thrones, yeah. oh, I feel like it'd be you killed her mother, you like, raped her sister, Prince Oberyn, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Guy. Wait, so what about him? So I, I feel like it would be similar-ish, right? But I think, of course, Aragorn's not going to be quite so flashy and you know maybe as as quite as agile, but yeah, I feel like that would be kind of like a similar type of fight yeah well said yeah and sorry it was it was aragorn against the mountain or yeah, it was like Leg aragorn, aragorn. 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 Yeah. yeah i mean uh, aragorn i think he has better fighting skill and he's he's got kind of a magic sword right there's your difference it, and you know the, yeah. the mountain is just a mad bear pig and he's going to beast mode <laughs> the whole thing and try to hew him down but Aragorn you know he's wily he's a he's a Dunedain ranger and he's he's got he, I mean Narsil coming back is um brain fart. Andril. thank you Andril. yeah that may be the advantage there pierce the armor yeah Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess in, in the movies we do see, or in the extended edition, we do see Aragorn, you know, fighting a, a troll with a sword. An armored troll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which Old dog high. You know, like, like a mountain. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, not too far off. Troll. I'm working on working on raising a bunch of uh, Olag high in the pits and Mordor to go take a... <clears throat> Go assault um, Osgiliath in that game. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, Legolas slays Boromir. Next fight of the evening, Sauron against Elrond. I picked Elrond in this, but it's... Ooh. I'm kind of, though, like, kind of like I'm rooting against my pick, so we'll see. There's enough elves here already. Yeah, yeah. Although, what a, do we have any room for? At least he's half man, right? Yeah, you always say that, and I know it's kind of true, but I don't consider. I just don't see it that way. He's that's fair. A, I mean, because he he doesn't he chose to be an elf too. Yeah, really, yeah. At the end of the day, so I'm just looking at. The, oh, I'm sorry, we're on the wrong side of the bracket here, guys. So all of our fights tonight are on the, the overlay. Hold on, let me take it off. My yeah, the, the left side of the bracket. Um, all our fights are on the left side tonight. So anyway, Sauron got here by slaying Samwise and Gwaihir. Not terribly impressive, but that's the path of a one seed. Whereas Elrond had to go through Thorin Oakenshield, who he dismantled rather easily. And then Faramir upset Smaug. So instead of having to fight Smaug, Elrond had to fight Faramir. And also, that one was a little bit closer, but uh, as I, I'm just I'm trying to remember... I think he ended that fight with at least 60 life points, right? I mean, it, it wasn't super close. So Elrond's done good. Um, 
yeah, this will. Th this is a great third age battle, though. Um, from the lore, we know that Elrond, um, basically, you know, he he says at the at the council named after himself, uh, and this won't be too much of a trip to Lordor, um, but just. Chuck, I think you've gotten to that part uh, in your reread of the books here. Uh, he does specifically mention at the Council of Elrond that, you know, they cannot stand against the armies of Sauron. Now, that's not a 1v1, but even we know that even with the ring, his armies in, in a fortified position would have been no match for what Sauron could have brought to the table in the Third Age, right? When Sauron can't really take a physical form anymore. Uh, and does not have the One Ring, whereas Elrond is openly using his Elven Ring. Uh, and even then, he he's hesitant and just says, you know, I, I don't know, I just don't know if we can take him. Uh, keeping the Ring here is not an option. So that's that's kind of all the the lore that we have on the matter, and the rest is. What can they do? Their track record, basically, their their record in battle, and what have they done when they fight? Right. And that brings us true, to true, and and I think it's it's kind of worth pointing out too that we don't have the uh, yeah kind of like Megatron version of Sauron that you see <laughs> in the films, where it's yeah. just like a walking suit of armor. So yeah, <laughs> Megatron, I like it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Although this is, you know, this is, uh, we say Sauron Gorthout, which is a little misleading. We've gotten some comments on that. Like, is he Sauron or is he Gorthout, right? First age versus third age. The answer to that, I, I want to make it simple as I can. Basically, third age Sauron is who we're looking at here. You know, first age Gorthout is more of a sorcerer. We did, in terms of the skills, at least in the table you see here, imagine more third age sauron doing physical melee battle but also you know ability with with magic and everything to use range combat as well here so elrond is going to actually prefer to keep the distance here and try to use vilia as much as he can so is sauron interestingly so they both want to kind of hang back from range here necromancy against the Elven Ring Vilia. The okay. battlefield conditions, though, favor Sauron slightly. And so they're they're going to... But they're still going to be able to use preferred weaponry 88% of the time here. 89. What do the graphs tell us for, the, for our data fans out there? Green line Sauron, blue line Elrond. Not many advantages for the half-elven half lord of Imladris. Oy. And by not many, I mean maybe two, maybe three. Slight, slight edge in valor. Slight, slight edge in stamina. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. It did, with this one, it, it looks like Sauron. It's just basically a more powerful version of Elrond. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. The graphs almost line up here, right? They're, they're both, you know, they both... Prefer magic, relying on uh, sort of finesse and 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 magical skill. Although both can again, they don't prefer to in this in this match. But it'll be interesting to see if they're forced to use melee. What'll happen here? Neither one has great armor. Super close. Super close. Yep, striking is super close. Valor super close. Ferocity more of a significant edge for Sauron. Elusiveness big well. edge. Yeah. Yeah, I think deflection, magic, and spirit are the highest ones. Oh, I was reading stamina the other way. Sorry, it's Elrond that has the advantage there. My bad. <clears throat> yeah, he's pretty much got the edge on everything here. Um, as you'd expect, you know, if these two actually did go head to head, I think the thing that would have made it interesting in the books and and could make it interesting in this matchup here in the battle engine is the ring Vilia. What can it do? Well, it's going to be a contest of ranged attacks, which you got to look at accuracy, 
They're dead even in accuracy, but piercing, Sauron has the advantage with his necromancy attacks. Mm -hmm. And to defend against range attacks, you'd be looking at deflection first and foremost, where Sauron again has a significant edge. And then their toughness, uh, that, that goes towards melee. So deflection and, and armor, oof. What, what does Valor do again? So yeah, Valor. As a, it's your it's, it's your anti ferocity. So it's resisting a strike landing, and then if a strike does land in the damage phase, it's one third of resisting damage. Uh, so I guess, well, it's it's such a marginal advantage for Elrond. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Let us find out, shall we? Let's go. Let us fight. <laughs> In an epic Third Age clash, we have Sauron against Elrond. Let us fight! First attack to the half-elven Lord of Imladris, and he does some minor damage. Hmm. Good start. What does Sauron have in return? A hit! A wound! A major stroke! <laughs> heavily huge! <laughs> he says, off with you, foul one. Off with you, foul <laughs> half-elf. He's not messing around. 72 damage. Well then. You might want to buckle on that ring again, Elrond. What do you got for us? Miss! Nothing. A hit! A wound! Slay! Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Mordor level Why? beat down by the Dark Lord. Absolute haymakers. <laughs> do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man! Shit, I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great Sauron impression there. Uh, yeah, that was him. <laughs> wow. There's <laughs> he, he's probably another good Sauron impression as well. I don't want peace. I want problems always. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was the Dark Lord of a different kind, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> the the other Dark Lord, <laughs> Melkor. Melkor. That's right. That's right. Melkor. Yeah, Melkor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a four round beatdown. That that is a record because I remember the the next closest one was um, what was it six rounds? I think the next closest one was six rounds. But man, that yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah that was... he's beat down. Yeah, dude, Sauron might take this whole thing. <laughs> and I mean, he just—that's the crazy part. It's just four rounds, and, and you know, against the five seed, like it wasn't even close. Yeah, <laughs> this is this. <laughs> this is Elrond. They ain't cut. Yes, they did. They must have cut me. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. must have cut you. Yep. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. I mean, no, that's, that's, funny. That's, that's the thing about Philia, you know, versus uh, the, the one ring, you know. So we don't have the capacity. <laughs> no capacity. We don't have the capacity. No. No. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, so so if if you guys are just joining us, we just witnessed a record beatdown, Sauron against Elrond, and uh, yeah, just the Dark Lord wipes the floor with with the half elven Lord of Imladris. Mm -hmm. Not close. So, how's our bracket looking, guys? Before we get to our last fight here, let's no, do not. a quick check in. All right, so. Elrond will advance to take the winner of our final fight here, Finrod against Ancalagon. And then back up here, our earlier fights tonight, we had Legolas in an absolutely epic, epic fight against Boromir. 
when I say epic, do you guys remember the number? Was it 80 rounds? 82 or something. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah, Lord. Like 47 arrows. So we, we could have a doubly historic fight night tonight. I think we might have seen the shortest fight of the tournament so far and the longest in the same night. Mm -hmm. Wasn't wasn't there one that was like 110 or something? Uh, you, you might be right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe one fight short of, of a record there. But anyway. So, yeah, the, here we will have Aaron Way against Legolas in the Elite Eight. Ew. Yeah, yeah, ew. Ew. Well, let's hope Finrod dies in a hurry. Yeah. Pencil dick against the black. <laughs> we already know who's going to win that. As, as we pointed out earlier, <laughs> the, those those thick arrows, they really are. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it, was, it was the girth of the arrows, really. Must be, must be. See, we, we, we can't get off this joke because once it's out there, it just it's the first thing and the only thing I think of when, when I see Finrod. <laughs> Again, and, and if you're hearing this the first time and you're wondering why, oh, are these people 12 years old? First of all, yes, we are. And second, secondly, uh, one of our one of our founders was on and, and he said he didn't know. He, you know, he, he's seen the Lord of the Rings movies, but he's unfamiliar with the first stage in the Silmarillion. So he heard us talking about Finrod Felagund, and he's like, "Why do you guys keep calling him Thin Rod? How do you know he's got a thin rod?" <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, lovingly, we refer to him as Pencil Dick. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The Chamber of Death, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, <sighs> so, last fight of the night. <laughs> With that being said. Is Finrod Felagund against Ancalagon the Black? Initial thoughts while I pull up the stats, gentlemen. Um, it'll be interesting because I feel like fin Finrod's obviously going to want to, you know, prefer magic. Um, I, and Calagon being a dragon, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know how. Ma I mean, because I, I guess he's—I don't know how magic resistant he would be. That's the the uh, and Caligon. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's kind of where I'm, I'm. I'm curious about right because it's. Yeah, I feel like if it was like a melee fight, it would be much easier to say. Okay, well, he's got you know very thick skin scales. Yeah, yeah. Armor, all those things, but. Yeah, man. Um, interesting thing here. Battlefield conditions are favoring Finrod. So the characters are going to use their preferred weapons only 40% of the time. Now, that's very unusual. So it's worth considering what that means. That's going to heavily favor the more balanced character, which in this case, well, it's probably on Caligon. And Caligon wants to use dragon fire from ranged, okay? Finrod also wants ranged, but they're going to have to melee from time to time in this particular battlefield. Burn him to a crisp. Close quarters combat here. So, and Caligon might have to... Let's see his stats here. So, 90... Look, dude. It's like he's a dragon or something. His striking's 88. His valor's 95. His ferocity's 99. His armor's 88. He's just a freaking tank. Any advantages we can point out for Finrod? A few. Agility and elusiveness. So, dodging. He's a dodgy, dodgy little wizard, man. <laughs> and that might help. <laughs> especially in close quarters, you know? He's got to be... He's got to use that um, elusiveness, especially... And also, he'll have an easy time engaging his agility versus the dragon's... Um, what is that? Dex... No. Ugh. Brain fart. Okay. His agility... Yeah, versus elusiveness. I'm sorry. Yeah, his ability to jo dodge yeah. melee. Yeah, so let's do a quick comparison there. So, 
And Calgon does not have elusiveness, right? 57. Finrod does have agility, 87. So he's he's going to be able to engage. He's not going to miss much. That could do it, man. So, and Calion just has a huge tough, toughness advantage, armor advantage, deflection. It's it's interesting because like I don't think I've ever seen. Well, I'm sure we have, but th this particular fight, the the zigzagging, right? It's that they just could not be more polar opposites. Like, I mean, you know, like. Dick Joseph's hide, like it's literally <laughs> like yes. po polar, yeah, po po polar opposites. <laughs> you can't put the dick jokes aside; <laughs> they're already out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, dude, I like Ann Caligon in this, man. But it's, am I really gonna? Am I going to be shocked if Finrod continues? Not really. It's going to take some doing. A couple lucky rolls, but, you know, the battlefield is tilted in his favor. And look at their skills here. They're, they're only, in terms of overall skills, they're only 11 apart. So mm -hmm. this is a typical 2-3 here. They're, they're pretty damn even. What say you? Let's do it. Shall we fight? Let's go. Let us fight. Last battle of the evening, we have Ancalagon the Black against Finrod Felagund. Let us fight. Felagund with the first stroke. Tink! Minor damage. Ooh. And Culligan. So small. A major stroke. Yes. Heavily hewn oh, with the jaws of Utumno. He took the elf in his mouth and slashed him with his fangs. <laughs> Impaled, perhaps. <laughs> you surely just say he took the thin rod in his mouth. <laughs> he took the thin rod in his mouth. <laughs> and something about impaling. <laughs> Finrod comes back with a blow. Oh. Slight smite. He's a grower. <laughs> and he is able to blow. Ooh. The dragon comes back. Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> and the black wins. And Caligon the Black, that is, wins. <laughs> We're having a good time here in the Chamber of Death, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are too. I hope every I hope everyone out there likes likes jokes because uh, obviously we do too. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> I had it ready. <laughs> you were, yeah, you were just you know, right on. That is so funny. Oh my god. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Colin Colligan versus that versus, horn keeps uh, getting funnier the more you guys ring it too. <laughs> Uh, this is reminding me of sessions. My stomach yes, hurts too much. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, no, two beat downs tonight. Uh, Not close. well. We we did talk about. Uh, I guess that that you know the, the elves, right? There there was quite a few of them. Uh, now that that's definitely um, <laughs> that list has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> Who is doing that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it, dude. Like, oh, fuck. keeps reading it, and it keeps on getting more funny every time he does. It's not me. It's not, it's not me. I don't know who broke who it. That. Uh, every yeah. time I hear that, I'm just uh, like, brother. Uh, what's that? 
What's that, brother? <laughs> exactly, dude. Uh, <laughs> crying. Oh, man. <laughs> what's, what's that, brother? <laughs> uh, oh, well, uh, yeah, I was, I was I have a. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to delete that shit. <laughs> I'm going to upload the. Um... <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Oh, man. So for, for all you elves and, and horn fans out there. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Yes. Yes. What, he, didn't, he didn't like the chicken sandwich. He must not have liked the chicken sandwich. Man. It didn't have enough limbos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna. I'm gonna dream about that noise. Oh, oh man. Well, all right. So Sauron versus Oncologon, right? No, yeah. That's lame. Yeah. So one of them has to die. I don't like that. Yeah, the one two, one two ended up materializing. This was our chalkiest sub region of the bracket. Um, uh... most of your high seeds ended up coming through on the on this area, unlike some of these others. Um. Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and update update this bracket as as we're talking here. But uh, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on the on the left side here? Oh man, I see. So we got Sauron versus Ancalagon, and then Legolas versus uh, Ironway. Ooh, I feel like we we could see a battle of the number one seeds. It could, like yeah, Ionway versus Sauron. I don't know. That's a oh, that's a tough one. Okay, I'm I'm rooting for Ancalagon though. I think that that would definitely be a fun one. Yeah, and sorry. So Ancalag yeah, Ancalagon against Sauron. Ooh, that would be a fun one. And you got a you got a not only a badass but a cool character coming out of that contest. E either way, either way, right? And then this fight here. Give me one second. I can refresh it so that we actually have graphics. There we go. So, Anway against Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> and Sauron against Don Caligol. So that's where we're at. All right. So elf on elf and then, you know, evil on evil. Yep. Interesting. Closing very remarks, very gentlemen. Um, I will say I'm very surprised Legolas got this far. <laughs> yeah, dude. Legolas in the Elite Eight. Who'd have thunk it? I mean, again, his path has kind of been Petunia Central, you could argue, right? Because... Gandalf bows out early. Boromir takes down Fingolfin. So he, he seed-wise, he's had an easy path. But, uh, man, can he do enough from range to have something to say against the Maya? Mm. Yeah, and it's, you know, that's probably, it's one, that's the thing, is like, it's, it's one of the mightiest characters in, in the yeah. war, too. Like, it's, it's, I don't, I don't see it, but hey, let's. Uh, you never know. <laughs> There's, it's, if we know anything about uh, these fights, is that it, it, it can happen. <laughs> and you know what? L looking at Ancalagon's path down here, I, if memory serves, I honestly think his hardest match was <laughs> a Eowyn in the his, his hardest. His hardest match was the Babe. Mm. The 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 Babe m made him hard, or. No, just made him nervous and just made, okay, over, made him nervous a little bit. Yeah, but what about the the mature? No, because by then he was already, you know, he already got one out. So yeah, he already got one out, and then he wiped the floor with Galadriel. Yeah, yeah, he was ready by that time. And then, and then and zero Rod. zero <laughs> issue with pencil dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took out the siblings. Yeah, took out the siblings. All right, guys. Well, as always, appreciate you guys hanging out. We, it was fun tonight. Yeah. Got silly. 
<laughs> you got silly. Um, but some good fights, at least. Yeah, one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, cool beans. Well, tomorrow's fight should be just as good, right? We'll see if we have a, another 100 rounder or whatever. But those short ones are really fun, too. Um, someone just smashes <laughs> in four rounds or whatever. Dude, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, yeah, they're like, no, no, I'm, I am not. I am not messing around tonight. It is done. <laughs> Just going to step on your throat. Because yeah. a couple of our upsets yeah. happened when, you know, look at this character let the other guy hang around and didn't step on anyone's throat. And what yeah. do you know? They get upset. All right, guys. Well, thanks again. Um, everyone watching, please do as that red bar says, you know, the obligatory promotional crap that we're not very good at. But hey, we would greatly appreciate it if you come along on this journey with us, follow, and uh, we, we have a, a bunch of cool stuff coming down the pipe. Everyone says that now, but no, for real, because not only are we going to do this tournament with this battle engine, but there are future permutations and future tournaments and future character situations that we have in mind. Um, much, much more to come on that. So. So stick around, stay tuned, uh, like, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, we're out there on your favorite platform. So appreciate you guys. And yeah, thanks everyone for watching tonight. And until the next battle, remember, as Professor Tolkien tells us, you can only come to the morning through the shadows. And where there is life, there is always hope. You are never out of the fight. <laughs>